Welcome back scholars. This video will be about acid base definitions and different ways that we can think about acids and bases. And the simplest way of thinking about acids and bases is the Arrhenius definition. And in the Arrhenius definition, an acid is a substance that produces H plus in water. And a base is a substance that produces hydroxide ions in water. So for example, HCl dissolves in water, produces H plus and chloride. Sodium, hyd sodium hydroxide dissolves and produces sodium ions and hydroxide ions. But again, in water, an acid and a base can react an acid and a base can react and they will neutralize each other if their amounts are perfectly equal. When we have HCl and sodium hydroxide react, notice that this particular acid and this particular base, when they neutralize the H plus and the hydroxide react to make water, which is one of our driving forces for double replacement reactions. But notice that this is also only this neutralization where H plus and hydroxide make water is only true if it's an Arrhenius acid and an Arrhenius base that are reacting. This is also a little bit of a trickier definition because it's only in water and it's only looking at the things that are made in water. So what if the molecule goes into water but it doesn't make either one of these ions in the solution but what if it could accept something? So that's the next definition. And the Bronsted Lowry definition of acids and bases is more widely used in, say, biology. And it focuses, instead of on what's made in water, it focuses on how protons are being transferred. And so a Bronsted Lowry acid is a substance which donates an H plus to another substance. And a Bronsted Lowry base accepts an H plus from another substance. So, for instance, if we think about weak acids, like, say, acetic acid, acetic acid doesn't really dissolve, um, doesn't really dissociate. This is a weak acid. It doesn't dissociate very strongly in solution. So it doesn't make a lot of H plus in water, although it does make some. But what happens is that this acetic acid, this H plus, can be donated to something else. And when that gets donated to something else, it leaves the acetate ion behind. And I shouldn't do brackets there, I should just do parentheses. And a Bronsted Lowry base accepts an H plus from another substance. Ammonia is a very nice example of a Bronsted Lowry base. And in fact, that H from the acetic acid that H can be donated to the nitrogen and the ammonia and then this bond here breaks and it's that electron pair there moving that actually accepts that H plus which leads us into 
the third and final way of thinking about acids and bases, which is with the Lewis definition. And a Lewis acid is one that accepts an electron pair. And a Lewis base is one which donates an electron pair. And again, we'll use the ammonia here because the ammonia can donate an electron pair. But we'll use the boron trifluoride as an example of a Lewis acid. You may recall when we drew Lewis structures that the boron trifluoride was an octet exception. The boron could form a maximum of three bonds and it did not have, didn't have eight electrons. So the electron pair here from that nitrogen is able to be donated to the boron on the boron trifluoride. And what this does is it creates a bond. And so that creation of the bond counts as donating that electron pair. This reaction is so energetic that it can actually explode when it proceeds. In all of these definitions, anything that increases the ability of the compound to produce H plus in water or hydroxide in water, to donate H plus by weakening this bond, or to accept H plus by increasing this electron density, or to accept an electron pair by decreasing electron density, or donate by increasing, all serve to make that acid or base stronger. And recall that a strong electrolyte, which includes strong acids and bases, strong electrolytes ionize or dissociate or dissociate completely. And weak electrolytes don't do this. They only do this partially. So when we talk about something making these acids or bases stronger, when we say stronger, we mean more completely. When we say weaker, we mean less completely. And so strong or weak is a binary choice here. Stronger is binary in that strong and weak is binary in that if it's strong, it's strong. It dissociates completely. There's no question about that. Completely breaks apart in solution. Whereas if it's weak, it's only partially ionizing, but there are, um, a, there are ver variations within that spectrum of weak electrolytes. Some weak elect electrolytes are stronger, where more of them dissociate, more of them ionize, more of the molecules ionize, and then some of those weak electrolytes are weaker, where they hardly ever ionize. For instance, these acids with oxy anions of chlorine, we see reducing numbers of oxygens around the chlorine. The fewer oxygens there are around the chlorine, the less strongly the electrons are being pulled away from this bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen as we go down. So the stronger this bond gets, which means that it's harder for these acids to ionize. And if we look at how much of this turns into this, there are ways of measuring this. And this value for the per chloric acid is 40. Chloric acid, it's 10. And basically anything above that would be considered to be strong. So even though this one is stronger, it doesn't really matter. We're still going to say that both of these dissociate completely in water. whereas Anything below here is weak, and not only is it weak, 
but as you go down, as this exponent becomes smaller, more negative, these acids are becoming weaker. And so between these two weak acids, this one is stronger than this one because it dissociates more completely. It still only partially dissociates, but it partially dissociates a lot more than this one. And so those are some definitions of acids and bases, Arrhenius, Bronsted-Lowry, and Lewis. And we're generally going to stick with the Arrhenius and the Bronsted-Lowry. Those are usually the easiest ones to use. The Lewis definition of acids and bases is much more widely used in organic chemistry, specifically in solvents that are not water. And this was just a little bit more to remind you about electrolytes and to explain a little bit about why strong acids are strong and why weak acids are weak, and also how we can compare weak acids or weak bases to talk about which ones are stronger or weaker. The next video will be on pH.